These days, you're better off boarding a plane if you want to travel from New York to London. But what if I told you there was a time when these two cities were actually on the same continent? Well, the explanation is a bit more complex. For starters, back then, these two cities didn't even exist at all. But the tectonic plates they sit on today were a lot closer. Nearly 200 million years ago, all of the continents on our planet connected, making up one large supercontinent. This enormous piece of land was surrounded by one single ocean. We call this huge continent Pangaea these days. Some parts of this continent broke apart and shifted away from each other for our maps to reach their current configuration. There's even a nice experiment you can conduct to test this theory. Find a map online and print it on a piece of paper. After that, simply cut out all of the continents. Once you start playing around with them, you'll soon notice they all seem to fit together, like pieces from a puzzle. Probably the most striking thing you'll see is how South America perfectly fits Africa. What's even more fascinating is that this isn't the first time in our planet's history that supercontinents have been formed and then broken apart. Scientists have figured out that this happened at least three times before. And if we consider our planet's age, 4.5 billion years, the last 200 million is closer to the blink of an eye. So how did scientists figure out that continents move? Apart from the aspect of today's continents, they also looked at identical rocks, which have been found on different continents. They looked like they formed from the same minerals and under the same weather conditions. Some other secret helpers? Well, dinosaurs. Fossils from the same species have been stumbled upon in both South America and Africa. This particular dinosaur, named Mesosaurus, is said to have lived on our planet way before the continents drifted apart. It's hard to imagine how life on Earth must have been with one single continent. For starters, the climate must have been very different. That's because the mid portion of the land would have probably been bone dry, having little to no source of water. More so, it was most likely hidden away behind many mountain chains. These would have acted as a barrier against moisture and rainfall too. However, geologists have also studied coal deposits from the United States and Europe. These seem to show that at least a part of the ancient supercontinent which was close to the equator, must have been an amazing tropical rainforest, just like those we can find in the Amazonian jungle today. Coal appears when remnants of plants and animals get stuck into swampy water. If enough pressure is applied by the water, the substance is first turned into peat, then into coal. Our planet existed in this continental configuration for over 100 million years. And during this time, there was a lot of life on Earth already thriving. Hey, it was a great time to be an insect. Critters like beetles and dragonflies flourished. During the same time period, the Earth was roamed by the predecessor of all mammals, the synapsid. Life in Pangaea was severely hit during one not so great period. It's believed that a comet or asteroid landed on the surface of the Earth about 251 million years ago. The asteroid or comet theory seems to fit pretty well because 90% of all marine animals and 70% of the creatures living on land disappeared all of a sudden. The comet might not have been the only reason for the mass extinction. At the same time, there was also some important volcanic activity happening in northern Asia, which might have disrupted life on Earth. We may not notice it, but continents do continue moving as we speak. This configuration we now see with the help of satellite imagery will surely not be the last. Australia, for example, is slowly moving towards Asia. But the most important proof that our continents are still shifting is the eastern portion of Africa. This area is simply breaking off from the rest of the land. To witness this, you'll have to travel to one of the hottest places on our planet. But if you get to this piece of land on the eastern part of the African continent, you might sit on top of the exact spot that, soon enough, will be split in two by water. Underneath this region, 
three tectonic plates are slowly drifting apart. If the data is correct, in the far future, Africa will be split in two. And between its two regions, a new ocean will arise. To support this theory, scientists have been closely studying a 35-mile-long crack in the Ethiopian desert for years. For this new ocean to form, it's estimated that 5 to 10 million years need to pass. Since our planet's crust is made out of multiple tectonic plates that are constantly moving, it's the perfect place to study this process. These plates are all irregularly shaped, and they are always mashing against, sliding under, or over each other. Those three tectonic plates found under the desert are also moving at different speeds. One of them, called the Arabian Plate, is sliding away from Africa at a speed of about one inch per year. The other two plates are moving a bit slower, somewhere between half an inch to 0.2 inches each year. More so, as these movements happen, material from deep inside Earth climbs to the surface and forms an oceanic crust at the edges. All this movement does make you wonder, how will the next supercontinent form? and when. So far, scientists came up with some possible configurations, each with its own name. Novo Pangaea, Pangaea Ultima, or Amasia. All these predictions still vary, as we're not sure how and why continents really move over time. One clue may be actually looking at how Pangaea separated in the first place. Regardless, it will take anywhere from 15 to 100 million years to see the next future continent, depending on each scenario. Novo Pangaea looks at the possibility in which present-day movements continue. In this scenario, the Atlantic Ocean will continue to expand, all the while making the Pacific smaller. The two American continents would first combine northward. Africa, Europe, and Asia will have already combined, too by the time they all meet together in one single huge piece of land. Another possible scenario is called Pangaea Ultima. In this case, the Atlantic will slow down in its expansion and actually become a landlocked body of water. North America, Africa, Asia, and Europe would become somewhat parallel pieces of land, completely sewn together. Underneath them, South America, Antarctica, and Australia would complete the circle surrounding the North Atlantic. All the while, this piece of land would be surrounded by a large Pacific Ocean. Amasia looks at a scenario that's a bit difficult to understand and study at this point. Since several tectonic plates look like they are moving north, it might be possible that all continents, apart from Antarctica, will slide completely toward the North Pole. The climate would be a lot different and way colder. Both the Pacific and the Atlantic in this scenario would remain open bodies of water. Scientists believe this to be a real possibility because of some anomalies left by Pangaea deep in the Earth's interior in the part called the mantle. Looking even further into our planet's future, it's estimated that in about one billion years, the luminosity of the sun will be somewhere around 10% higher. As such, the atmosphere on Earth will closely resemble that of a moist greenhouse. Because of the added heat, all the bodies of water on our planet will start to rapidly evaporate. Moving further to 4 billion years from now, the temperature on our planet will soon transform it into a Venus look-alike. It might get so hot that the Earth's surface will begin to melt away. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.